So, welcome to DustyPete.com, because this is a place where we can safely explore the endless ways of God and the interconnection of His creation, where belief understandings, they may be challenged, divine misunderstandings, they may exist in traditional teachings, they just might falter as we pursue connection, context, and community with God and each other here in an environment of grace and love. So, feel free to journey around the space. Explore. We have many different topics for discussion. Outside the class, Sons of the Father, the Bible Project, Aleph Beta, Follow the Red String, and more. So lend your ear, then lend your voice. Join a conversation, start a conversation, ask questions. Because on this journey, you're probably around folks that just might be pondering the same thing. Community that can build and connect. So come in and join us. And welcome to The Dusty Feed. So good evening and welcome to Dusty Feet. It's June 29th, 2023, and it's another one of our special series, The Sons of the Father. Oh, and by the way, in case you noticed if you listened to the last one, that I said the wrong date on the last one. <laughs> you can tell we do record these. So um, uh, my bad, my bite. Okay. So um, during the, we're, we're going to continue our discussions on The Chosen, right? Created by Dallas Jenkins. And we'll be talking about Season 2, Episode 5, Spirit, right? And as we're talking during this series, my dad, John Wern, my brother, Jim Wern, and myself, you're going to listen to us have a conversation. And we'll be reflecting on the things that have impacted us along that journey. So, again, welcome to The Sons of the Father. In the description below are links to all of the audio, video, and source documents that we use here in the Dusty Feed. We want to make sure that any material we use here is properly credited to those folks who work so hard to bring it to us. Without their efforts, the learning we do here does not happen. And remember on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon if you want a reminder. And here we are again, the sons of the father. So something again, I want to reference up front that sometimes issues can arise from discussions like these that we're having and the assumptions that we have on others listening. Again, it is always unintentional. But if you don't understand or have some questions concerning something we've discussed, please feel free to leave a comment. We'll respond as best we can. <coughs> Wonderful. <coughs> well, that's a poor time. Or you can always just send an email to bobthedustfeet.com or probably talk about things. Spirit. Interesting title for the show. That said, daddy -o and James, um, this one was loaded. And anybody that's supposedly watched it ahead of time know it's loaded too. So what hit you, dad? Well, I say, that, again, I say that, that there's so many things in here. Uh, uh, starts off with Mary, and then you've got Jesse, uh, Simon's brother, uh, talking with Shmuel, and then Mary and Rama talking, and, and just it just goes on and on and on. But the one of the things that jumped out at me and your 
your mother brought it up again when I, when we were watching it uh, today. Again, that uh, noticing Mary and the impact it had on her mm. with, we might use the term PTSD, but the memories yeah. and the soldiers going by. And because she was involved with a uh, counseling group for many years and was on the board and and friends with the with the, uh, the, the founders of it. Um, she was much more familiar, but she said the look on Mary's face, it just changed when she saw them first fear. And then it wasn't fear. It was determination or memories or or uh, I, I don't I don't know, but when I saw it, I, I, I realized. And the uh, religious leaders, uh, they weren't talking with Jesse. They were hammering him, trying to get him to say something that would incriminate uh, Jesus. And, and Bob, as you and I were talking earlier, you, you know, we, a lot of times as Christians, we think Jesus was Jesus and everybody else was some other name but they, they were very clear in there that there are hundreds, if not thousands of Jesuses around, whether it ends up being Joshua or Yeshua or, or whatever name, but uh, trying to set the stage for what th this little plot they were putting together to nail Jesus. Mm -hmm. And later on, he's talking with John the Baptist about it and, and um, when uh, Jesus meets with John and sits down on the tree trunk or wherever they were sitting and talking, it was touching in many different ways uh, as two practically brothers. They were months, literally months apart in age. And uh, just what life had been and their callings and uh, John was hammering Jesus about, hey, you know, you're supposed to be out there. Why aren't you making your move yet? You know, you're going off by yourself. You should be in. Then you do a miracle. Then you go up in the hills and don't tell anybody about it. And John was very visible. And then at the end, he calls, he says, you know, I'm your boy. Whatever you want to do, I'm I'm here for you. You're you're the Messiah. I'm the, and, and it was quite touching the whole, the whole conversation. And, um, the, the, uh, um, it just, there's a lot of things that, that I will bring up again after you guys get a chance to make your opening salvo. So <laughs> Jimbo, what up? I too was impacted just watching Mary and her response to, both the Roman soldier on the horse riding by, as well as the um, demon possessed guy. And it, it was just interesting for me, um, whether she was dealing with fear or whether she was dealing with shame. Um, I think there was probably a little bit of both. Uh, the demon obviously was capitalizing on all of that as well. And it, it was interesting because it's like, I, you see the demon say some very specific things, you know, that, that impacted her, but you know, there was already stuff going on inside. And if that's not the, you know, the typical way that we deal with our own past and our issues, you know, it's like, we're our own worst enemy. The enemy just has to put a little bit of, you know, salt on it and it, it just goes. Um, and so that one really hit me hard and, of course, I know what the next episode is because I've seen it in the past and I'm looking forward to that one. But this one just building up to it and just when she walks into the bar, it's like, oh, oh, man, it just brings up so much. Um, I think the other thing and it was so funny, I'm, I'm I'm questioning why he named this one when I say he meaning Dallas, uh, this episode spirit. I don't know if it has to do with you know, the demon being a spiritual demon, you know, being, um, <clears throat> other than that, it didn't seem, it seemed like an odd title. Uh, this one, it was like you said, dad, a lot of the conversations that were going on, 
um, and what was happening. A lot about plans. You know, you, you, you saw the, the Jewish leaders' plans, you saw Jesus' plans. Jewish leaders talking amongst themselves, Jesus talking to John, um, and even Jesus talking to Simon, the zealot, yeah. uh, and saying, hey, you know, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to embrace my way of doing things. And of course, he throws the dagger in the, in the lake. And it's like, wait, 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 then why do you need me if you're, you know, but yeah. that's Jesus, you know, he likes to rock the boat. Um, and, and even with John, you know, just talking about the difference of approach. John was more about, you know, dealing with the sin and those kinds of things, you know, condemnation for people doing the wrong thing. Jesus was more about the grace side of it. Um, both have their merit uh, in terms of, yes, we need to deal with sin. You know, we don't want to let it go rampant, but Jesus kind of coming at from a, a slightly different perspective um, and obviously clarifying that to, to Simon as well. It was just, it's a, it's a great episode. I've, I've got lots more, but like dad said, I, I'll hold off. Bob I want you to enter into this conversation. Interesting. Um, I'm not, this is Bob's opinion, obviously. Uh, I'm not convinced that Jesus is the grace scenario here in, in that regard, because he would say sin no more. He has the point. Um, Dad, Mom, and I were talking earlier t today about some stuff, and one of the one of the particular points that I liked about this that they they made it very clear that when John is talking to who he's talking to, and when John goes off and he's going to go, yeah, his point was he's one of us. Okay, so he's not Rome because he's not attacking Rome. This is one of their leaders. This is a Jewish heritage leader. He's one of us. So he's calling him out. So I, I'm like, a very good point, because because it is a, a truth issue. So then the balance becomes this, because John really, in the story, even if you go back, follow it, he's the, he's that line, if you were to, if, if you were to put um, Jesus on one side and you put the Pharisees on the other, John's in the middle. Okay, it's not the other way around because he is like he's calling him out. So he's doing the same thing the Pharisees are doing. Doing the exact same thing. He's just picking his target, right? And he's doing that. So it's an interesting thought and, and a challenge in that that I think that from, from my perspective, the, the way I saw it and the way I see the actual real story, that was the whole point. Um, Mary's challenge with this that I found intriguing is that um, I think there's a thought maybe or uh, obviously an inference that once you start to follow Jesus, of course, then you're always going to be there, right? And no, 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 and you have this, and um, this is handled very differently. And um, but it's a, a vulnerable it's it's painful because it's real uh, and because you don't have to view that as a as a prior possessed issue that would that just stirred up what was already part and parcel to, to what was going and once something was rattled um it's like a a, a weakness the visit when she's out picking persimmons Mom brought up the points. Again, I thought it was really good. Um, this was Mary picking fruit from the tree. <laughs> and then when the Roman soldier comes over, she goes and hides. Okay, there's all kinds of, you know, parallels of playing this, but for the wrong reason, right reason. That's the interesting way you, you test this. But that shakes her. And so now she's on wobbly ground. And then we have the uh, the visit, and that that rattles her to the core, and she's then she's realizing, am I really? Should I really be with these guys? And that's really part and parcel of the question, and and the one we ask ourselves that that same question daily. Uh, but her her walking through, and what we see now is is not the the pleasant um, the the visual nature of. Um, when you see her and she walks down into the um, t 
to the place and it's dark and it's down light behind dark yeah. before. And then when she goes to the door and he says, okay, and she tries to get him to go and he goes back and tell Thor, you know, mm-hmm. da, 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 he shuts the door. And then she's now in that zone lights up darks down. She still has a chance to mm-hmm. walk away. So there, there's a, a lot in, in that to go. So um, those are things for beginning that, kind of grabbed me so well and okay. what was interesting too is it's like when the when the demon possessed guy first came into the gathering she kind of goes out to confront him you know and she tries to call the guy's name i say what's your name you know and she really tried um and then you know it didn't work as well as she thought it was going to work and you know it, it kind of threw her and it reminded me, and this was wisdom, Dad, you've probably been given the same um, advice too when you're out in the field doing ministry and you're on your own, like I would go across the country and you know speak at a camp or something. Um, and they said, you know, be careful after your event, whatever you're doing, it's right afterward, you're very vulnerable. It's like you have this, this, hey, you know, did a great job. God was glorified. Woohoo! You know, and then all of a sudden, boom, the attack hits. You know, and I think that's what hit her. You know, it's like all of a sudden after it, she stood up, got beat up a little bit, but, you know, coming back, then she was at that, again, vulnerable stage. And rather than going to good people, safe people, you know, that could help her, she went back into what is known, familiar, you know, comfortable. Um, I need a drink. Like I pretend of. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a point. Um, yeah, I'm I'm rolling with that. Uh it reminds me of a time that uh when your mother was involved with that uh counseling group, that one of the people that worked there um had written a book on possession and all um she came to live with us uh to give because she was anyway i came home one day walked upstairs and she was in her room bigardi mom's aunt was in her room and i hear this noise you know what the heck it almost sounded like an animal and I said, oh, my gosh, did she bring her dog? And I, and the door was open, so I wasn't, and I looked in, and she was sitting on the floor with a razor blade slicing her arm up. And she looked up at me, and it just gives me creepy fills, chills right now. And this voice came out of her that was, uh, that stopped me in my tracks, to say the least. And she says, I know you, I know all about, you know, and she was going and, and you're just frozen. Cause I was thinking of those guys there when the demon comes in and that they're all like, get back, but they're all scared to death of it. You know, of this, and it's just one guy, there was three of them. They could have jumped this before Simon ever came, but it's this, it's, it's a whole different feeling. And like I said, this gal was a speaker in that, but somehow she got drawn back in. Have I ever been drawn back in? Let me count the ways. And, and yes, (laughs) I ran out of fingers a long time ago, but those, those are the things that we all have to be aware of and be careful of. And that's why me being belonging to celebrate recovery or you have other men in there that you can call and and what did mary didn't go to anybody else she didn't sit down and say this is what i'm struggling with she was doing it on on her own and the 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 other um the the um uh, dealing with the uh, demoniac um the way that Simon took him out and was physically fighting with him. You know, Jesus came in and said, get out, and then f- crawled down on the ground with him. And, and that two ways of approaching being attacked. 
in very opposite ways, but uh, very effective uh, in, in, in Jesus's way. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know uh, how, like I was with this woman frozen at the doorway going, okay, what do I do now? Call a doctor because, or the psychiatrist, because she's slicing her arm up with a razor blade. And how do you handle that? Did I call Jesus into the room? Did I start to pray for her? No, I was trying to figure out ways in my head to get her to stop doing that instead of going to the source, mm. going to, to Christ for my, and I, that's what Jesus, to me, what Jesus was talking with Simon about. Yeah. And that's a little Atticus popped up in, <laughs> in this, and he's like incredibly confused, picks up his knife out of the, and he's, he did everything but scratch the top of his head like Laurel and Hardy, you know, the, just like, what do, I, I'm incredibly confused yeah. with it. So it just, it goes on and on and on um, with, with questions and Jesus's approach opposed to the common approach. Yeah. Whether it's his cousin or Simon, I like the line when he introduces himself, I'm Simon. And Simon goes, wait a minute. Jesus goes, let's stop right now. There's two Simons, you're both Simon. And that, <laughs> but, you know, just those little things of humor that soften mm -hmm. the poem, but don't take the point away mm -hmm. as they continue talking with him. So it was story after story inside of a story. Well, most of them understand that they don't, up until... Jesus's interaction with them, the the way to handle those type of characters was to avoid. Yeah. It's not to to not engage. That's the whole point. What did what did we have with with the initial the initial um interaction with him and Simon mm -hmm. and Simon's response and I'm still Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I I'm 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 intrigued by the answer. I'm not sure if I'm compelled as much by it, but still not, you know, the deal said it, if it doesn't go to you, it doesn't go to somebody else. And if you can handle it, then better you. And yeah. that time comes, runs the mm -hmm. deal. He's not thinking about the Messiah. He's not thinking about whatever, whoever it is or whatever it is on, on that scenario to, to play out. So he's, he's in, in that deal. It was go your way and, and, Avoid the confrontation, but no fear of the confrontation. He had his knife out. He would have easily <clears throat> slit the guy's throat as do that. Um, when we get to to Mary, the rest of them don't know the answer. I mean, you're, you're right, Dad. They're they're there, okay. Mm -hmm. To be fair, uh, but the truth is that what what Thomas is not exactly um, he man, muscle man, and and Matthew picks up a wooden spoon. So <laughs> it's not. It's not like they're again those He's little eat him to death, do that. He... <laughs> so so they're not they're not really in this how do you handle mode. It's the, it's it's the they don't know mode, you know. Right. Yeah. And um and then when Simon comes leaps in to the scene and he gets this physical confrontation and then he's losing that physical confrontation when Jesus comes in without this big it's it's a it's it's um strong and demonstrative yeah. but quick. And simple yeah you know um don't don't mistake the 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 bold in the space for the quick and the simple not long big no holy water no 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 it's out okay and then that yes then um that the balance of who who does he go to first right and he goes and he kneels down to this guy face down in the dirt yeah you know and you realize that he had spent how much of his life, of which we do not know, mm -hmm. um, not in good care and not in good health, and obviously out of society. Um, and uh, he's like, you're safe, you're back. And then he gets up and says, feed him, do this, do this, while he goes and has those, those conversations passed there. Um, That's what Jesus does for all of us. 
but we don't but but the rea but then see here the challenge is it's easy to look at a story that we do now and wonder why they didn't know that then no, you know I'm why they didn't that. react that way we do this today. all the time we we, we 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 read stories and we project back that they should have gotten it that they didn't do something that they should have had more faith and i and anybody that's watched the dusty knows i don't agree with that 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 it's very much of in in their sandals they're doing exactly what's good john this whole time s s says what jimmy he's saying hey it's time i i get you being nice i get you healing i get that stuff but you know if you just took care of rome it's going to make that a lot easier so let's <laughs> just let's just get rome out of the way and we can move on so everybody's his herald is is goes that direction um, Mom and I talked about again today, one of those little brief little things is it's interesting. It intrigues me. And you look at it in the stories, it's the same way is that he says things are going to happen. Right. But it's it's um, it's almost parable like in nature, analogy like in nature. It's not as clear. Look back on right. it now, looking back, we can we think right. we see it clearly. But back then they don't know. And they all still think the whole group, the 12 are going to get they all think. He's eventually going to knock out Rome. John goes, gets his head cut off, thinking he's going yeah. to take care of Rome. He dies with that thought in his head. So it's it's a different expectation for them, hugely different expectation. Uncomfortable for us, but it is theirs. And to be fair to them and and fair to John, but to turn and say they 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 know no different. Yeah. But I think that what Dallas is saying is that he's giving an example, but Jesus is no different today than he was then. He meets each one of us right where we're at, whether it's on the ground, mm -hmm. whether it's in a hospital bed, whether it's in a mansion. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he meets us, and that mm -hmm. to me was an spoke to me as an example that we can learn from them as he hasn't changed one bit. Mm -hmm. He pursues us the same with the passion and the love. And that mm -hmm. that's that's what jumped out at me for that particular scene. Yeah. Fair. Good. Yeah. Great. Jimmy, anything else? It was a great episode. I looking at it, I'm it's I love the anticipation of the surface. Yeah. Yeah. With <laughs> you know just this this confused roman trying to figure it out it's like there are some ways where he's being a little conniving and other ways he's not because he's trying to figure it out for himself and yeah. i'm anxious to see where that goes yeah um and and again it's like all the different ways in which we encounter jesus it goes back to jesus's parables of the sower and the seed you know it falls on different kinds of ground it falls on different ears and how he's received um mm -hmm. And we're getting to see that kind of fleshed out. And I and I love that aspect of, of Dallas's story writing. Very good analogy. I like that a lot. And it and that if you take it this way, because we have it one way, I mean that thought, but that that same exact thing plays out in this particular way as well. Yeah. But one thing I thought was was funny hit me is funny because Jesus is practicing his Sermon on the Mount speech. Yeah. And I, you know, when I worked for Johnny, I asked her one time, you know, are you ever nervous about anything? I mean, do you prepare? And then she went on to, to tell me how, yes, because I'm getting up and I'm representing Christ when I speak. But that the fact I never, ever, ever, ever thought about Jesus preparing for the Sermon on the Mount. You know, I'm surprised he didn't have Matthew there taking notes, but it was so cute. Uh, maybe that's a, a lame word to use, but that was his human side coming out saying, Father, I want to say the right thing. Father, I want to represent you in the yeah. best way. And he's thinking about how to word things. So that just struck me as uh, the human side. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good because it. we don't, yeah, we, there's, there's ways we don't, and and the chosen does it a, a number of times. Ways we don't picture 
how Jesus would be acting, responding, doing some certain things that we do that. And that, that you're right. This is one of those ones where you, he's working through how he wants to say what, what he wants to say. Because I think we get in this, he's in this, I don't know, I want to use this term loosely, this airy-fairy thing where it just, he just speaks yeah. and it just flows from his, and I'm, again, Dad, I'm agree. I'm not compelled by that. I'm, I'm, it's very much about what, as he's living this out and he's he's when he's talking to them he's going how can i share this with them with stories that they will eventually cling on even more cuz he yep. knows and he even says cuz he tells the guys look they're not going to get it they're not going to get it now you're not going to get it now he tells the group a story then leaves and they has to explain it to his 12 and they still don't get it so we, we see a, a lot of that with this, which, again, I'm not convinced that we necessarily <laughs> get it ourselves. Yeah. That's another, that's for another chat. So, um, any other last bites other than, yeah, that was, uh, that was good. Anything else? I'm good. Okay. I'm good. So, again, people, please go back. And if you watched it once, watch it again. Um, and... Pay attention to Mary. Watch her face. Watch her expressions the whole time. I think you're going to see more and more of what might be worth pondering mm -hmm. later on, especially where we're going with the, the next episode. So, yeah. again, if you watched it, you'll know. If you haven't watched it, you'll know. How's that for a good one? Okay. So, our point to ponder, again, going back to the same thing that we go to with The Chosen, um... And, and to remember that even when we want to, at times, walk away, uh, despair, sometimes give up, we don't know, to remember that um, we've still been chosen. And that does make a difference. So, again, thanks with us tonight on another episode of Sons of the Father, The Dusty Feet.